Hey everyone and welcome back to a new video on my channel. I'm FPL Pricey, otherwise known as Sam, and today we're going to take a look at some of the transfer tips ahead of game week 14, covering hopefully all of the most essential players that are moving in and out of our sides. It's probably sensible to start off with Jared Bowen because I think a lot of the moves in are going to depend on him. So Jared Bowen frustratingly missed what was arguably one of the easiest games of the season against Burnley away from home in game week 13. A lot of us held on to him based on the lack of news that David Moyes was giving us, but quite a few of us, I think about 5% of the owners or 5% of the game rather, jumped off of him since last game week. He finally got a price drop last night, mainly because he didn't feature at all against Burnley and we still haven't really heard anything to guarantee that he'll be fit against Crystal Palace. What I would say is that so far, all we've heard is positive news about the timeline. So we're not expecting him to be out for too long. However, because that prime fixture against Burnley is now out of the way, the fixture list isn't quite as good as maybe some of the owners would have hoped it would be for the stretch that we have Bowen for. So when we look at the fixtures ahead, we've got Crystal Palace, who have been a pretty sturdy defence so far this season. It is green on the ticker, but I don't think it's a prime fixture. Then Spurs away. Now Spurs away on paper doesn't look too bad at the moment. Spurs have got defensive frailties right now, but they will be getting one or two of their players back by that point. Especially, I think Romero is back from his ban in game week 15, which means that three of their back four at least are now starting again. That would be Porro, a doggy and of course, Romero and Van der Ven would be the only player then out of their back four. So they might not be that bad in game week 15. Then it's Fulham away. I don't think there's many arguments there. That is a pretty good fixture. But then Wolves after that have looked like they've got something about them this season, followed by Man United, who weirdly have been in a good, a pretty good run of form recently as well, despite maybe some criticisms on Twitter or X as it's now known. So overall, the next five I don't think are absolutely amazing fixtures, despite the fact on paper they don't look too bad. I still think he's a good hold if he is fit for Crystal Palace. 7.6 million rather is still very good value for money. But I think it's when we start looking at the other players available around his sort of price point that he becomes a little bit of an easier sell, especially if we don't get anything to guarantee that he's going to be starting for game week 14 onwards. The data is still good. The underlying XG per 90 is still really, really good. So I completely understand why some people would hold on to him. But... I think he's probably on the chopping block for me this week unless we get an absolute guarantee that he is going to start in game week 14. And even then, I think there is another player or two that I really want in my side with better fixtures to come anyway and better underlying data as well, by the way. So I think for me, he's probably on the drop. He's probably a player that I'm looking to sell this game week. I would like a couple more days just to think it through though. But overall, I think he's probably a player that is leaving my team this week personally. Do let me know what you think of Jared Bowen in the comments below and whether or not he's on the chopping block for you this week, or if you're thinking of holding him if you've got him already. So I did mention some players that make pretty easy substitutes for Jared Bowen at the start of the video. And Brian Mbwemo is definitely one of those players. He has risen up to 7 million now. So he is getting more and more expensive, despite the fact that he hasn't actually returned that many points in the last couple of game weeks. However, the underlying data is absolutely sensational at the moment. XG per 90 of 0.56 and an XA per 90 of 0.29 combines to make what is a pretty elite player in terms of FPL data. And yes, that includes penalties, but he is on penalties. So I think that is important to take into our consideration. And when you look at the next four games, I don't think it really gets much better than that for Brentford. So Luton at home is definitely a very good fixture. Luton obviously have shown a little bit more fight in recent weeks, but I don't think many of us would argue that that's not a good fixture for Brentford. Followed by Brentford away from home, uh, sorry, Brighton away from home in game week 15, which again, Brighton still haven't been keeping any clean sheets this season whatsoever. And Brian and Buemo could easily capitalise on that. So I think that's a great fixture for Brentford, especially from an attacking point of view. They don't need to get three points for Brian and Buemo to be a good option there. So I think it's going to be a competitive game. 
but Brentford are probably going to score in it and Brian and Buemo is as likely as anyone to do so. I would say exactly the same for the Villa game in game week 17, by the way. And obviously in between those two, Sheffield United away from home look like a team that are pretty doomed to going down this season and are conceding a lot of chances, a lot of goals. Again, Mbumo in all of the next four fixtures, I would say is a prime asset and at 7 million, really, really good value for money. Six goals, three assists so far this season, already on 76 points. I don't think there's really much to say against him at the moment as an option, other than the fact that in game week 18, as you'll see on the ticker below, he will have a blank. Now that's because Man City go off to the Club World Cup. So that Man City versus Brentford fixture will have to be pushed back a few weeks. We think it's going to go into game week 20. So game week 18 is going to be a blank and game week 20 probably going to be a double. Now, there is an argument to say that he might not even play both of the game week 20 games if it is put in there because he'll have to go off to the African Cup of Nations. But we're not sure about that at the moment. He might still play both of those fixtures. And of course, they might not even get put in that week anyway. So I think for the time being, the next four fixtures are absolutely fantastic and easily good enough to be bringing in Brian and Boemo for the time being. And I think we just either bench him or make a decision around game week 18 based on the information that we have at that point. For the time being, though, great buy. And I think he's probably going to be my transfer in for Jared Bowen. Another player who's had a price drop overnight was Son Hyun Min, down to 9.6 million now. So I don't think there's too much... For people to worry about in terms of the price drop mainly because a lot of us got him at 9 million or 9.2 million so we haven't actually experienced a drop in selling value overnight any of us who obviously got him in at 9.1 or 9.3 will have experienced that drop but it's still only 0.1 so i don't think there's any panic about the price necessarily but let's take a look at the performances recently and i think it's really important to note that Spurs have looked like a team that are still going to create chances even without James Madison in the squad and it is a big loss. He is obviously their key chief creator and they do look like a side that's been weakened without him and a number of other players at the moment in their starting 11. Probably some of their most important players in fact as well. However, Son is still getting those chances and I think it will get forgotten about, especially in game week 13, because all of those goals he scored, a hat trick of goals, in fact, were all offside. So they won't show up in the data and the data XG specifically will be dropping week on week at the moment. Every week he blanks, every week that um, he's not getting that service from Madison, it will probably continue to drop. But if it wasn't for the fact that all of those goals were offside in game week 13, the data would still be holding up pretty well. And to be honest, if he'd scored even one of those goals and it had have counted, I don't think too many of us would have looked at selling him. Now, a big part of the reason that a few people are looking at selling him, or probably more than a few people are looking at selling him, is three blanks in a row. That's fair enough. But then also the next three games aren't looking fantastic on the ticket either. Man City away from home, West Ham at home, Newcastle at home, Pretty tough next three games, and all of them will be without Van der Ven, probably Basuma, Saar, and Madison, of course, as well. So that's not looking fantastic. What it is worth saying, though, is Son is an elite striker. He's an elite finisher. He's playing out of position as a centre forward this season rather than the way he's classified, which is as a midfielder. And the data, especially that XG per 90, is still pretty good at 0.40 for a midfielder is still very good numbers. And he's so explosive. If he gets one goal, he's probably going to get maximum bonus as it stands because Spurs are conceding every single match. So none of their defenders are going to get max bonus, especially in the next three when I can I expect them to concede in the next three anyway. And they're still trying to create as many chances as possible. Son is now probably one of the only players on the pitch capable of burying any of those chances. So it's likely that any goals that Spurs are going to score are going to come from him more often than not. There will be the odd goal from other players around the team, of course, but he is their chief chance receiver at this point. So I'd expect him to be the one who's scoring any of their goals. If he is scoring any of their goals... He's probably going to be the one on bonus, as I've just mentioned. And against Man City, against West Ham, against Newcastle, yes, two of the three of those are very good defences. 
But I still expect Spurs to create chances in behind City's high line. I don't think that necessarily means that City are a bad defence. You'd expect them to concede three or four against Spurs because of a high line, because at the end of the day, they're still operating very effectively with that high line. But he will get one or two chances and Son is an elite finisher. So he's more likely than most other strikers to actually bury a half chance. So I think even over the next three, unless you've got no other issues elsewhere, I'd still be pretty happy to hold on to him. And then into game week 17 and 18, he becomes a very good hold as well. Nottingham Forest away. And then crucially for me, Everton at home in game week 18, when Haaland is obviously going to blank in game week 18, it won't have that game. And you might have issues elsewhere. Maybe you've got Brian and Bumo, maybe you've got Alvarez. So you want to have as many of the elite picks in that game week as possible. And Son against Everton at home could be a captaincy option that week. So I'd like to hold on to him if I can for that game week in particular and he's still going to tick along so I think with all of that in mind I would understand why people are selling him this game week because of the blanks and because they've got on paper three pretty tough fixtures to come but I can completely understand why people would hold him and personally for me unless I've got no other issues elsewhere which I do have at the moment He's a, pretty, he's a pretty easy hold for me right now. I'm happy to just ride the next three, hope he gets a, the, an odd goal or two, and then 17 and 18, he's probably a very good hold anyway. So for the time being, I think I'm going to hold on to him. But like I said, let me know in the comments below if you're thinking of selling him because I'd like to have a discussion about it. And I do completely understand your point of view on it. So another player that a lot of us are pretty fed up with at the moment, he's got very high ownership at 37.8% mil- rather, and that means over a third of managers own and have suffered at the hands of Ariola over the last few game weeks. One clean sheet so far this season in 13 game weeks for West Ham is not a great return at all. And I think the fact that he's 4.3 million is probably the only reason that any of us are really considering holding him at the moment. One clean sheet, one penalty save, which did boost him up a little bit in the opening few game weeks. And I think that's kind of shielded the fact that the XGC per 90, that's the expected goals conceded per 90 at 1.82 is really, really poor from West Ham so far this season. We're used to them being a pretty sturdy defence and David Moyes usually has them set up to concede as few chances as possible. But this season... They are playing a more expansive brand of football. They are conceding chances and they're conceding goals as well. 23 conceded in just 13 weeks is almost two goals a game. So that's not a great return whatsoever. Ariola has been a point of frustration, but I think the only reason that a lot of us will probably hold on to him for the next four weeks at least is on paper, they're pretty good defensive fixtures Crystal Palace don't score a ton of goals Spurs do fair enough but Fulham and Wolves are also struggling to score loads and loads of goals so far this season as well so I think he's actually probably a reasonable hold considering the fact that a lot of us have issues elsewhere a lot of us have issues in our defense in our midfield that we need to sort as a matter of urgency and Ariola is keeping his place he's ticking over with a couple of save points here and there And despite the fact he's not getting clean sheets, he is getting the odd save point. And three of the next four fixtures, if they're going to keep a clean sheet, it's going to be in one of those games. So I think for the time being, he's walking a very, very thin tightrope at the moment. But I think I'm probably going to hold on to him for the next three or four game weeks in the hope that he starts returning a clean sheet or two. And then maybe I can look at moving him on for the likes of Sanchez at Chelsea in around game week 16 or 17 when their fixtures become really, really appealing. For the time being, though, I think I'm probably just about going to hold on to him. Right, so I'm going to talk about two Newcastle assets at the moment that are really impressing us. But first and foremost, let's talk about Anthony Gordon. Now, He is a player that is rising in price quite quickly at the moment, up to 5.9 million now. And I have really enjoyed owning him over the last few weeks. I got him in on the wild card in game week eight, despite the fact he had the ban. And since then, he has really repaid my faith and been one of the key assets that's helped me climb up the ranks from 2.3 million to just inside the top 300k in a matter of five or six game weeks now. So I have a lot to thank him for. But with that being said, he is a player that, despite the fact I think a lot of us will be buying him, I would urge a little bit of caution. The underlying data is still good. 
He's still getting 0.3 XG per 90, by the way, but it's not elite levels. And I think when you combine that with the fact that Newcastle have got a lot of injury issues at the moment and overnight in the Champions League, it was a heroic performance against PSG. Very unlucky not to get the win in the end, but they didn't make a single substitution. And that is going to be a knackering 90 minutes for all involved in that game. Anthony Gordon included in that, by the way. And I think the last time we saw Newcastle a little bit dead on their legs going into game week 12 away against Bournemouth, they really suffered in that game. And look, they're a great team. They battered Chelsea. They looked fantastic in that match. They obviously performed really well against PSG. And it wouldn't surprise me if they went into game week 14 against Man United and beyond and also played really, really well. But I think it's worth noting that if you don't already have Anthony Gordon at the moment, I think it's he's probably a player that I'd have second or third in my list of priorities, probably not at the top. I don't think the returns that he's been getting so far this season are massively sustainable. Five goals, five assists is an overperformance on the XG and the XA. And look, he's going to tick along. He's a great asset. Under six million, he's great value for money as well. But I think when you consider the fact that Newcastle are going to need to rotate a little bit, and if they don't, these players are going to get really, really tired over the next three fixtures, which are all in the space of a week. I wouldn't be surprised to see Anthony Gordon either looking really tired or Newcastle looking really tired or Anthony Gordon himself getting a little bit of a rest or taken off early if possible, just so he can sustain his fitness over the next few game weeks. I've got him in my side. I'm very happy to hold on to him for the time being and hopefully the returns continue. But I'm a little bit nervous and I would urge a little bit of caution if you're a manager who hasn't got him in your side at the moment, because I think the horizon isn't looking too peachy for Newcastle. I think they're going to look a little bit tired. I'm hoping I'm proven wrong because at the moment I'm a very, very happy owner of Anthony Gordon and I don't want him to become a problem. But I think it'd be remiss of me not to mention the fact that they are probably going to be a little bit tired now. and over a, a pretty congested pitch uh, period of fixtures from 14 to 16, maybe that's going to start to show, especially when they've got two away fixtures in there against Everton and Tottenham and their home fixture against Man United isn't going to be too easy either. So as I mentioned, two Newcastle players who are high in mind for a lot of managers at the moment, the second of which is Alexander Isak. And he has been phenomenal recently. And 0.96 XG per 90 is one of, if not the best in the game at the moment. I think it's slightly behind Erling Haaland, but I need to double check that. And Darwin Nunez is around about there as well. So Isak is performing really well. He's up there with the best of them in terms of strikers at the moment. And the fact that he's only 12% owned is probably down to the fact that he shares minutes with Callum Wilson generally. But Wilson at the moment is a massive question mark. We don't know when he's going to come back. So Isaac looks like a player who probably has to play the full 90 as often as possible. Now, like I mentioned with Anthony Gordon, that could mean that he starts looking really knackered. He risks injury. Maybe Newcastle don't look so good if they are playing the same 11 week in, week out and playing them for 90 minutes. But with that underlying data, I can understand why some people would be tempted to take a punt on him, hope he stays fit, hope he continues getting the minutes, and of course, hope he buries a penalty or two as well whilst Callum Wilson is out. Now, with all of that considered, and three of the next five fixtures looking pretty good from an attacking point of view, I completely understand why he is being bought by quite a lot of managers at the moment. Now, I think if you're playing in a 3-5-2 formation and you've got the likes of Haaland and another, so let's say it's Haaland and Watkins or Haaland and Darwin. I probably wouldn't be selling either Watkins or Darwin for Isaac this game week. But if you've got the likes of Julian Alvarez, who blanks in 18 as well, I would probably have a look at that transfer and maybe take a risk on the likes of Alexander Isaac over the next run. There is a risk because... As we know, he's had his injury problems. Wilson could come back at some point in the next few game weeks. Eddie Howe is always really coy on injury, so we might get blindsided by that. We don't know when he'll come back. So there is a risk there. But with the data that is that good and the fixtures in the next five looking pretty decent as well, I would say that he's probably a higher priority buy and more interesting to buy as a player than Anthony Gordon, whose data isn't quite as good. 
So overall, I'd probably put Isaac ahead of Gordon in my list of priorities if you don't already have either. But I probably am not that tempted to buy him personally this week based on what I've already said about Anthony Gordon. But do let me know in the comments below if you're looking at buying a Newcastle player over the next couple of game weeks because I'm really interested to see how many of us are going to take that risk based on the amount of minutes that they're getting at the moment. So the final player I wanted to talk about today is Matty Cash and he has been a real sort of frustration since my wildcard. I think he's gotten pretty much all of his returns before I wildcarded in game week eight and a lot of us brought him in ahead of a really good looking fixture run from game week eight onwards and I think he's gotten one clean sheet in that time. No attacking returns. I think the highest amount of points in a game he's gotten is five because even though he got that clean sheet he also got a yellow card in that game as well so he has been flattering to, to deceive a lot and in the last couple of game weeks he's been taken off early as well he scored zero points in two of his last three so he is a player on the drop at the moment. He has had one price drop already this week, down to 5.1 now, and that ownership is starting to creep down under 30% now, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it drop below 20% in the next few game weeks. Now, the reason why is mainly because of game week 15 and 16, when they go up against Man City at home and Arsenal at home, Two fixtures that I'd be very, very surprised if Aston Villa kept a clean sheet in. And despite the fact his attacking data is still looking pretty good, he is still getting forward quite a lot. He is more often than not going to be playing right back from now on. And looking at the fixtures ahead, I can understand why people are selling him. Now, he went off at half time in game week 13 after a really, really dodgy tackle on Benton Kerr. And he probably should have been sent off for that, by the way, as well. So I think his minutes are at risk a little bit moving forward as well. I think game week 14 does represent a decent opportunity to hold on to cash for one more week if you've got issues elsewhere. Bournemouth away from home will provide a good opportunity for an attacking return and a good opportunity for a clean sheet. But you are taking a little bit of a gamble on the idea that he continues to start games for what it's worth I own him and I think I'm probably going to hold on to him this week unless I've got no other fires elsewhere and I am going to probably take a punt on him starting I think he probably will continue to start I don't think that they've got uh, an able deputy at right back that I think Emery's going to be happy with that won't change their system too much. Now, that is a suggestion, I think, of Konza moving to right back, but I think that probably changes the way that they set up a little bit too much. And Emery has gotten a lot of success out of this formation. Matty Cash, despite not being in the best of form, is definitely a part of the way that they set up and that structure. So I think he's probably going to start against Bournemouth. And if he has another shocker, then maybe he gets taken out against Man City and Arsenal, where they probably don't want him bombing forward as often. I could see them possibly risking it with Konza at right back in that game in particular. So I think for this game week, I would probably hold on to him. And I think if you have no ish other issues elsewhere, then maybe you could sell him. I just think there's a lack of other defensive options that I'm really, really tempted to buy this game week that would give me the upside over Matty Cash away at Bournemouth. But after this game week, he's definitely on the chopping block for me. And please do let me know what you think of him and what you're going to do with him in game week 14 and what your plans are with him over the next stretch of fixtures. So there you have it. Those are my transfer tips ahead of game week 14. Do let me know what transfers you're considering ahead of the deadline. And if there are any players that are in mind for you, that I haven't mentioned, please do mention them in the comments below and I'll let you know what I think of them. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. It would be really appreciated if you do so. And hopefully I'll see you back on my channel tomorrow ahead of my team selection video.